To find I, I can replace those three resistances by one resistance. First, I start with these two. So if I call this point A, I call this B, I call this C. So between B and C, I have two resistances in parallel. I have 30 ohms. It's parallel to 60 ohms. So I can replace them by one equivalent resistance. So between B and C, I have 1 over R is 1 over 30, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over 60. So that's 60, 2 plus 1. This means that R is 60 over 3, which is 20 ohms. So between B and C, I have 20 ohms. So now I can redraw this circuit so that it's 12 volts. Here's A. Between A and B, I have 40 ohms. And between B and C, I have now one equivalent resistance, which is 20 ohms. Now, between A and C, I just have two resistances in series, 40 and 20 ohms. So they add up to 60 ohms. So this is equivalent to one resistance between A and C, which is 60 ohms and 12 volts. So what's the current I? By Ohm's law, 12 volts, the potential difference is IR, so I times 60. So the current I, so 60 volts is equal to I, no, I mean 12 volts, 12 volts equals I times R, 60. So this means that I is 12 over 60, which is 0 0.2 amperes. So the current I is 0 0.2 amperes. That's 0 0.2 amperes. Now how about I1 and I2? This is I1, this is I2 here. So what is I1 and I2? Now between B and C, I have VB minus Vc is equal to I1, R1, I1 times 30. That is, I can go from B to C. I can go from B to C along this path. And so the potential drop will be I1 times 30. So Vb minus Vc is... 30 I1. But I can also go from B to C along the other path through the lower resistor. And then the potential drop will be 60 I2. So Vb minus C is also 60 I2. So I1 is 60 over 30 I2, that is, is 2 I2. But I1 plus I2 is just the total current I. The current I splits into I1 plus I2. So I1 plus I2 is I, which is 0 0.2 amperes. So I can solve for I1 and I2. I1 is 2I2, so I get 2I2 plus I2 is equal to 0 0.2. So 3. I2 is 0 0.2, which means that I2 is 0 
over 3 amperes. And I1 is twice that. So it's 0 0.4 over 3 amperes. So that's I1 and I2. Now 